Hi guys, recently I've been wondering, is there a very big difference between the quality of my mobile phone, the Osmos Pocket 1, and the Osmos Pocket 2? Now, some of these two price tag is only a $100 difference, whereas if you are getting a phone such as an iPhone, it might cost about up to $1,000. Now, we both know that these two provide stabilization while the phone only provides digital stabilization. But how are the footages side by side? Today, we're going to be comparing three of these cameras and hopefully reach to three different conclusions. Number one is to buy the Osmos Pocket 2. Number two, to save a little and just get with the Osmos Pocket 1. Or number three, just stick with your mobile phone and just use the camera and the capabilities that it already has. Before I continue and do the comparisons, I need to let you guys know that there are a few variables that will be different for each different cameras. First, the different kind of models, there are Android and there are Apple devices. So there are different camera types and different camera models as well as focal ranges. I believe newer iterations of either the Android or the Apple devices have improvements out there, be it color, quality or stabilization. So do keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about focal ranges and megapixels. For my S10 Plus, I'll be using the mid-range camera which comes in about 26mm and has a 12 megapixel count. On my Osmos Pocket 1, it also has a 26mm and a 12 megapixel count. As for my Osmos Pocket 2, it has a 20mm focal range and has a 64 megapixel count. So all the raw photos and footages you'll be seeing about today are all unedited and are all raw. So what you see is really what you get even if you have to buy them and shoot them for yourself. In my previous video, the DJI Pocket 2 did surprise me with the quality that you can get with the 64 megapixel photos. So I do think that it might perform the best this time round. What do you guys think? Without further ado, let's see how well these three different cameras performs. So far from the footage, I do notice that in low light and shadows, the DJI Pocket 2 do perform better than the other two cameras. I do apologize that you are able to see the Osmos Pocket 1 gimbal over here. It's probably due to my rig and the navigation in this little greenhouse. Sorry. In this scene, you can clearly see how the Osmos Pocket 1 underperforms in highlights due to the sunlight. My Samsung Mobile does oversaturate the scene quite a lot as it's definitely not this vivid in real life. Alright, I'll leave the rest of my observations when we are back in the studio. Well, just in case if you are curious how I managed to set up these three cameras to film at the same time, this is my setup. Now that we know how well they do in terms of video, let's see how well they do in terms of taking photos. I've tried my best to match the close-up photos, but there'll be differences due to the distortion of lenses, especially against my mobile phone. So just keep that in mind. Here is a photo taken from the exterior of the place, and from here, it might seem that the Pocket 2 is not doing as good. But once we zoom in, there are details that are very well maintained, and definitely less digital sharpening compared with the Pocket 1 and the S10+. Plus. Moving on to the second set of photos, 
the DJI Pocket 2 seems to be a little bit dark and less appealing compared with the other two. But once again, if we zoom in, you can see that it jam packs a lot of details. The Pocket 1 on the left is holding up, but there seems to be quite a lot of pixelation or blur in the flowers. For the S10 Plus, it's too saturated beyond my liking and dry due to the sharpening. It's basically trying to make up for the lack of details with the sharpening. Moving on to the third set, you can still see the same issues, but there is an edge coming up from the Pocket 1 as you can see a little bit more details from the texture of the rainbow background canvas. The S10 Plus photo is definitely off with the colours as you can see from the flowers on the couch. Where the other two legs, the Pocket 1 shines. The colours of the flowers are so rich and vibrant, there is this natural golden glow to it. It also does really well with the shadows, maintaining details as seen from the plant behind. Now let's just compare the wideness of the widest lens from both the Pocket 2 and S10 Plus. As you can see from the S10 Plus, it certainly does have an edge over the focal range as it can go all the way to 12mm, whereas the Pocket 2 can only go up to 15mm. Now let's zoom in. But I think you already know that it's going to be the same as the previous three videos. The details and the sharpening is still very obvious. Here is another set of wide angle lens comparisons. Lucky or not, the wideness of the lens does matter in these circumstances with the S10 Plus being able to capture this huge subject from a close distance. It is indeed a huge convenience in this circumstance, although the foot you can obviously tell that the distortion is quite a lot and looks quite unnatural. When we blow it up once again, the Pocket 2 comes way on top with the 64 megapixels and its ability to capture details and colours. So now that you guys have seen the video footage just side by side, what do you guys think? Now, let's break down into three very important points. Number one, the sensor size. Now as you have seen, the video footages all have different colours and different quality to them. But how big are the sensor size? It really matters. Now let's put them all side by side so that you guys have an idea of how big each of the sensor size is. Among the three of them, the Pocket 2 has the bigger sensor. But once you put it with a full frame sensor, you can see how big the sensor size of a full frame camera is and how it dwarfs the Pocket 2 sensor. But if you have to put the three different sensors side by side, you can clearly see that they have similar sizes. The smallest would be the mobile phone. And coming in next is the Osmos Pocket 1. And lastly, the biggest of them all is the Osmos Pocket 2. So you can see among them, the Pocket 2 does have the biggest sensor. So it is able to capture more details. But is it the main factor? Let's break down some of the colors and the different details in each of the scene. As you can see from these scenes, the Osmos Pocket 2 does produce nicer and richer tones as compared to the Osmos Pocket 1 or the mobile phone. The colors of the greenery in each of the scene from the Osmos Pocket 2 is kept a little better and there are more details retained in the highlights and shadows as compared to the two other devices. Number 2, Stabilization. If you guys seen, there is no stabilization on my mobile phone over here. There is only digital stabilization which is not available in 4K. So let's rule this camera out. Among these two, you can see that the Osmos Pocket 2 does have better stabilization when in terms of walking. The Osmos Pocket 1 does have a little shake as compared to the Osmos Pocket 2. The Osmos Pocket 2 clearly soothes out the walking motion which naturally my body or legs produces a little better as compared to the Osmos Pocket 1. Now before we forget, let's talk about the inbuilt quality of the mics that is on these two cameras. This is the built-in mic for the Pocket 2 and this is the built-in mic for the Pocket 1. Okay, now that we're in a quieter environment, this is the audio test. Alright, so this is the audio test coming out from the Osmos Pocket 1 and this is the audio test coming out from the Osmos Pocket 2. So we have just finished this place called the Floral Fantasy and we're heading out and now we're at the outdoors. I don't know about you, but I can tell a clear difference of the Osmos Pocket 2 as it has 4 different cameras on each side of the camera itself. Our third and last point, let's talk about pricing. The Osmos Pocket 1 comes in about 249 USD, while the Osmos Pocket 2 comes in about 349 USD without the creator combo. If you plan to go with the creator combo, which I suggest, you'll go up to about 600 USD. While our mobile phones ranges from about 500 USD to about 1000 USD. So which of these should you really get? In almost all aspects, the Osmos Pocket line do perform better than the mobile phone. In terms of photo quality, video quality, stabilization, colors, and sound quality. They are also forget to mention that the Osmos Pocket 2 does have wireless options which really improves the quality even comparing with the very good inbuilt mic that is already on this Pocket 2. 
If you guys have $249 to spare, I would suggest you going for the Osmos Pocket 1. It is slightly inferior as compared to Osmos Pocket 2, but it does all the tricks that this Osmos Pocket 2 can, except if you were to get this two-way all handle. Now, if you have $100 more to spare, I would highly recommend you to upgrade to this Osmos Pocket 2. This Osmos Pocket 2 has better colors, stabilization, as well as inbuilt sound. And if you need more options such as a wireless clip-on, the do-it-all handle does come in very handy if you are able to extend your budget for a further 200 USD. Now, but in all honesty, if you do not fancy the audio quality or the video quality from the comparison side by side, you can just stick with your mobile phones. It does have very good quality out there. I'm aware that the Apple 12 has very good camera quality from both the rear and the front camera. If you need gimbal stabilization, you can just purchase the Osmos Mobile and it does provide stabilization towards your footages on your camera. I hope you guys like this video which I compared these three different devices. Now I do know that there are different modes which I did not test out such as a time lapse, motion lapse or other forms of hyper lapse on these three different devices. But all these are just footages side by side in its raw format. If you enjoyed this video and you do like my recommendations, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. And ring the bell notification over here so they'll be updated of my latest upload. You can also click the playlist over here, which has just compiled on my Osmos Pocket 2, which I cover some of the reasons on why you need it, or even why you don't. If not, I'll see you guys in the next video.